Hi guys, so I thought it'd be a really cool and sort of fun idea to do like a beginner's breakdown guide on how to start growing out your hair or your natural colour or things like that. Um, my only thing at the moment is growing out my natural colour, which means if my natural colour starts growing out, that means my hair is going to get longer because um, I'm not dyeing it and doing like nasty things like that to it. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to go for 10 because um, I think that will be a nice, you know, round number to use on things that I think will help in growing your hair. So I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh my god, my hair's like down here and I'm trying to grow it more and give you advice. My hair is not long, so I hate them videos. I know they're still helpful, they're very efficient, they're very helpful, but I really hate them videos where you don't really see a difference or a comparison to, you know, their hair originally. So I like to think that my hair since the last time like the last few months ago, I'll insert a picture now. It's come a long way since then. Um, obviously, I'm changing my partner around all the time, but the health of it and everything like that is just like so much, so much better since I started doing these things. And I'm always looking for new tips and tricks on you know things I can do, things I can try, things I can take or whatever um, to make it grow faster, so I can get this dye out of my hair without you know necessarily using a chemical on it or whatever. So number one thing I'm going to say is, and it is going to annoy the hell out of everybody, is to drink more water. I know everybody says it on YouTube and blah 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 blah, but I swear to you, it's the God's honest truth. If you drink more water, not only are you going to feel better, your hair's going to look better, your skin's going to be great, your nails are going to like grow, but you know, it's just good for everything. So if you're drinking water, you can't really go wrong. I know it's difficult because it's boring. Um, even if you just get one bottle and you get through half of it in a day, brilliant, you know, if you get through all of it, even better. Just set yourselves like little water goals. Um, I always try and get through at least a bottle a day. I just fill this back up so I've got like a, a guide. And um, when I was doing my fitness, I did, I drank like two of these a day and... I never used to drink water a massive amount, but it really just helped me start start getting started, start getting started with um, drinking water. So give yourself water goals, um, whether it's half, whether it's you know whatever, and you can even like li little markers on it with a sharpie pen just to see how much you've like drunk. And I think that's a really cool, fun way of doing it. Number two, I think it's a really good idea whether, you know, providing you can take them, is to take some sort of vitamin and supplement. They're really easy to get hold of and you don't necessarily have to spend a fortune on them like some places like, you know, Holland and Barrett or whatever sometimes have extortionate prices or some sort of brands have really high prices. If you look on the back of vitamins compared to different brands, whether it's like, you know, a Finest brand, a tes like a Tesco's brand or an Asda brand or a... I don't know, Holland and Barrett brand, the ingredients on the back are usually the same, like the same amount of, say, biotin or iron or folic acid, like, usually the same amounts, it's the prices are higher because of the brand names. So, it doesn't really matter if you're on a lower budget or a higher budget, I have tried all sorts, I've tried Wilkinson's, I've tried Tesco Zones, I've tried, you know, seriously, I've tried every single one, I've tried the new ones, I've tried high-end ones, all sorts of multivitamins, biotins, things like that. And I've got one now that I'm I'm happy to pay the price for. It's not really high, like I've spent 20, 28 pounds on some before, and then I've spent like one pound to two pound fifty on them before. So this is my favourite one at the moment. If you're a lady and you're trying to grow your hair, it's centric for women, and it's literally got everything as a multivitamin that us ladies need every day. And not only that, it does say on the box, which I don't have on me now, it helps with hair, skin and nails as well. So you're going to find things in it like biotin, folic acid, iron, zinc, things like that. So very important. And if you want to do what I do, or whether you just want to take a multivitamin and just start like that, um, I like to mix mine with biotin. I don't religiously take this. I usually forget. 
Um, but I take one or two of these every day. They're not a massively high dose because I don't feel like I need to take a really high dose. I feel like these really help on their own. But if I want to boost it up a bit, I might take two like every other day. Um, people bang on about biotin all the time and how amazing it is. It is very, very good. Um, but if you're like prone to like breaking out and things like that, um, you're going to want to stick to drinking your water. <laughs> it's really, really important to drink water with these. So if you're just starting off learning to drink a bit more water, maybe leave these until you've got the hang of that. Um, because you really do need to wash these down um, because otherwise they're just, they're not going to work and you're going to break out. So taking a multivitamin or a biotin sort of supplement is my tip number two. Number three, I really think it's important to ensure that you have a good conditioner. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be a really expensive conditioner, like I've got one that's I say really expensive, I've got one that's like Tony and Guy or I use the macadamia mask sometimes and then sometimes I might use like a Tresemme mask or a Herbalescence mask. It doesn't necessarily matter what mask it is but as long as you're doing like a deep treatment then that's really good. So whether or not you're just using your standard conditioner and leaving it on your hair for a little bit longer than you normally would or you've got one of the pop masks or you know the ones in the tubes or whatever, doing one of the, like your deep conditioning masks whether it's once a week, whether it's twice a week, whether it's every other wash, whether it's every day, um, they're always really good to do. So I think that's also really important to keep your hair nice and soft and silky and just keeps everything under control a little bit more. Number four, and my most important tip I think this is, is to use an oil, whether it's every other day, whether it's every week, whether it's every day, kind of like your deep conditioner. I find that coconut oil is the best oil for me. Some people prefer olive oil, some people prefer... Um, is it jabawa oil or jabawa? Jabawa, I don't know, or castor oil or things like that. But I just love coconut oil. It's the best oil for me, and it's brilliant. I literally, when did I do it? When was it last week? Last week I did this every single night. And people say not to wash your hair every single day, but if you're doing this every single night, you're sort of getting like your good kicks worth. And I've been doing the inversion method for the week, and my hair has grown, which is strange. And um, yeah, so doing this um, whenever, you know, you want to do it, it's just really important to make sure that you do give your hair a nice oil mask, whether you're doing it overnight, whether you're leaving it on for like just 20 minutes. I usually put it on before, like 20 minutes before I wash my hair, like every time I wash my hair. So, you know, it's really, really good to use a nice oil on your hair because it just soaks up all the goodness. And if you're like me and you wash your hair probably a bit too much more than you should, you're putting that oil and nutrients into your hair again that you're probably rinsing away <laughs> too much if you're washing it maybe more than you should be. Number five, and that is to be able <laughs> to let yourself, I'm such a hypocrite when I say this, to not wash your hair as often. Now, I can't really say that I'm the best at this, but like I previously just said, I do put... Um, coconut oil on my hair like every time that I wash my hair so I kind of get away with it I'll probably wash my hair every other day so every two days it kind of depends how I'm feeling where I'm going who I'm seeing whatever um, and you can kind of get away with it like that if you sort of wash your hair every day or whatever but literally honestly hand on heart the less you wash your hair the better it's going to be for your hair overall like the natural oils are the best for it like compared to coconut oil olive oil and any, any kind of oil ow your natural oil is the best oil for it so if you leave your hair if you if you wash it every day if you start washing it every other day your hair will naturally get used to being oilier so you'll be able to go longer in the long run um without washing your hair so you might be able to go every other every two days or every three days you know some people can go like a week without washing the hair like my mum like what the hell is that all about um so yeah again where the water comes in you're washing and flushing and ah, it makes everything just go a little bit better up there uh makes you sound like you've got a mental problem up there as in your hair up there as in your hair so yeah try not and wash your hair as often and um, so if you go every day like i say try going every other day um you can always use a dry shampoo during your greasy days or talcum powder so number six now this is always hard especially if you're like me i know how hard it is if you're trying to grow your hair but you've got shorter hair or even shorter than my hair whatever how hard it is to not want to dye it 
and to not want to like use heat tools on it. Now I know, I know, I know, I'm saying this video with straight hair. I know it's hard. But if you can give up one or the other and then maybe do it just a little less, that will help. I promise you. Like, I'm trying to grow out my natural colour at the moment, so obviously I'm not dyeing my hair. I think I've gone almost coming up to three months now without dyeing my hair, and I can assure you, <laughs> like, how amazing it is now compared to what it was. Like, you can see in, from the picture that I posted before when it was like an off red, how much healthier it is now. It's, like, it's actually shiny, and it's not all frizzy and flyaway and yucky. I mean, don't get me wrong, it does get like that, but... <sighs> Hello. It's burped. So yeah, if you can give up one or the other, that's brilliant. You know, less dye is always going to be better in the long run. Or if you dye your hair a lot, try using a semi-permanent instead. You know, just to sort of break your cycle down. Not necessarily go cold turkey and be like, oh my god, I can't do it anymore. If you want to do that, that's fine. But if you want to start breaking it down like a beginner's guide, like I guess this is, um, just don't do it as much or use a semi per semi. Semi, semi, semi. I'm semi, semi, semi. Um, a semi permanent dye, so it's not as harsh on your hair. Um, as for heat, um, maybe turn it down if you've got the option to turn it down, or let your hair just dry naturally if you can manage it. And I promise you, when your hair dries naturally, the first couple of days it will look like shit. I promise you, it will. But after them few awkward days have passed, your hair sort of goes. Actually, I'm quite used to this. I'm trying to get my mum to do it, but she just will not listen. Your hair does get used to it. You leave it alone without heat for a bit and it will it will love you back. Like if I've been using heat on my hair for quite a while and then I stop using it and then I let it dry naturally, it kind of goes, oh, what am I doing with my life? Oh, no. Oh. Um, it will do that for about two, two, two washes, two, three washes until it sort of goes, actually, ah, and it'll go curly again. It won't sort of be like some frizzy scarecrow. So just trust me, it will settle down. Then we're getting there right so i know if you've probably been watching all these videos online that they're gonna say get trims get your hair cut blah 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 but if you really really don't want to do that don't do it it's that simple nobody is sitting there saying to you if you don't get your hair cut it will never grow okay now i get it that it's a good idea to trim your hair but you don't have to cut off like nine inches you just don't. If you've got like a bit longer than mine or my hair or whatever kind of, doesn't really matter. And it is severely damaged, like severely bleach damaged. And you've tried the hot oils and you've tried, you know, maybe taking a multivitamin and you've tried the conditioning treatments. And you have tried things to get it better and it still isn't, you know, getting there, get a trim. But if it's not, you know, if it's not like seriously like chewing gum, stringy, hanging off. My mum was pretty damaged before I started all this and I maybe took off like just under half an inch myself you know you can get you, you could probably do it yourself not maybe recommend it but you probably could do it yourself like that little amount and it doesn't have to be a lot if you do get it done it's up to you but if you really don't want to get it done don't do it you know just see how it goes your hair naturally grows from your roots so if it's going to grow it's going to grow and they say that, oh, it'll snap off and it will never look like it's growing. That's true. Like, your hair doesn't grow from here, but it does break from here. Unless you've, like, severely bleached it up here and your hair's falling out. <laughs> but, you know, it's literally just what your hair's like. You, if you've done it before and you've, like, started to restore your hair, whether it's with coconut oil or the water or my vitamins or the conditioning treatments or whatever, just you know just see how it is and if it is so dire that it is just not doing anything just take off like just half an inch or just under half an inch and just do it like little and often it doesn't have to be chunks every six weeks because otherwise it's gonna go dush 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 and it's not gonna grow it's not gonna look it and yeah it'll probably look healthier but you're gonna be stuck in that phase where you're gonna start dying it again because you're bored of the length you're gonna start straightening it and curling it and all sorts and it's never gonna grow so just see what your hair's like you don't necessarily have to cut it all off it's totally and utterly your choice number eight put your hair up more if you're able to put your hair up put your hair up it makes life so much easier it's it's amazing how just putting my hair up has actually made such a difference to my hair length and healthiness because it's not getting battered by 
wind and rain and blizzards and Hurricane Desmond and all that sort of awful weather and whatnot. So just bung your hair up, use a scrunchie or use a hairband like this with no metal around it because otherwise oh, it's just going to rip your hair out. So, you know, scrunchies or just plain simple hairbands. Just bung it up. Tip number nine, use a heat protectant. Whether or not you're drying it, blow drying it, the same thing, straightening it, curling it, whether you're not even doing anything to it, it's sometimes not a bad idea just to put it on anyway. It doesn't have to be expensive, like I've said in all my other stuff before. Just chuck a heat protectant on. Sometimes, even if I don't straighten my hair, I put it on anyway because it helps with like UV and, you know, it, it just prepares your hair to get battered if it's not up. So, where's the harm in chucking a bit of heat protectant on? There is none. I use this one because, as I say, it helps with, like, uh, UV and things like that. So, is it UV? It's UV. I'm pretty sure it's UV. Sun stuff, you know. <laughs> Although, it's December, so that's ridiculous. Um, alongside things like this is, you know, heat protectants, leave-in oils like this one is really, really good. Or just putting in a bit of, you know, your coconut oil, if you've got coconut oil, just at the ends of your hair. And you can dry it in, you know, just don't drench it, you'll be fine. Or just let it dry naturally. Um, so that's also a really cool idea. It's mad. And the reason why in this video I haven't spoken about shampoos and conditioners and certain types to use or to not use or sulfate free or not sulfate free is because I think it is generally up to the person who's doing it. You know, whether or not they use a Tresemme brand like me or a Matrix brand, or a sulfate-free, sulfate, sulfate free, or sorry, that's not sulfate-free. If it makes your hair look and feel good and you're happy with that, that's all that matters. You know, you get these people on here, like the herb freaks, that are sitting there saying, if you don't use this, it's going to get like that. If you don't use this, your hair's going to fall out, blah, 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 blah. Would I recommend potentially using head and shoulders on your hair every single wash? Probably not. But if you've got, like flaky scalp and you need to use that shampoo don't not use it because somebody's told you not to use whatever you want on your hair it doesn't have to be expensive it doesn't have to be cheap it is completely up to you i am really disloyal to my shampoos and conditioners because i'm always changing them i'm always using different ones if you do want to see what i use i have got an updated hair care routine a couple of videos back so if you want to have a look at that look at that but that's the only reason why i haven't spoken about the shampoos and conditioners and things like that in this beginner's guide because you will work out what works for you you will i promise you now you will work it out <laughs> and not only that but some people can't afford it like i've tried to sort of make it as cheapy friendly as i can and doing things like just at home that you can do it doesn't have to be really really expensive and it really, really grates my, grinds my gears when people on here, with hair down here, are bashing on about saying, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. If you don't do this, that's going to happen. If you don't spend £150 on one shampoo, shampoo your hair's going to fall out. I don't necessarily think that's true at all. You know, it's up to you at the end of the day. But staying positive is the most important thing. Without positivity in this journey, it's just not going to happen, you know. If you're sitting there going, feeling really down today, and you will have them days, and you go, I want to dye my hair, I'm going to bleach it, I'm going to straighten the fuck out of it, whatever, you're going to feel crap. So just stay positive, stay happy, and just, you know, watch this video a hundred times if you have to, but don't let anybody tell you what you're doing is wrong if you know that what your hair likes and what works for you is the right thing to do. And I hope this video helps, guys, and I'll see you soon.